let's look at South, South Africa's PMI released yesterday showing a slight contraction from 37.9 in May to 37.3 in June. Many say very disappointing considering that we are seeing those manufacturing figures globally hit closer to that 50 level. Yes, no, it's definitely disappointing. Obviously, there is a lag between what's happening globally and what's happening in South Africa, which in itself is already a bit of a disappointment because when the uh, manufacturing PMI started tanking in global economies mm -hmm. at the end of 2008, South Africa did not wait long to adjust on the way down. It seems to be taking longer to adjust on the way up. And also, even though April was probably the weakest month, it's a very hesitant uh, recovery. So I was just wondering, is it a problem of... Uh, uh, having had less stimulus on average than some of these uh, major economies is a problem of businesses being overcautious on our side and continuing the reduction in inventories longer than uh, what uh, their counterparts in the rest of the world are doing or you got to ask the question is uh, is uh, the, the recent recovery in the round about 20 percent in trade weighted terms since the beginning of the year penalizing well, manufacturers well depending on where you think the rand is going do you think that this is the bottom of those pmi figures or do you think we could actually see a worse number going forward? I, I honestly i doubt that we see a worse number i mean the, the the generally the business cycle here does not decouple fully from the rest of the world we know that i mean consumer demand is weak but so it is in the rest of the world this is not a fundamentally different mm -hmm. story Interesting PMI numbers in, in China coming in at 52.8 from 51.8 and it's the first country that actually breached that key 50 level. No surprise mm -hmm. there, all the stimulus that we've seen coming through from China. Yes, yes, ab ab absolutely. I mean, around the world, policymakers are mm. pumping a lot of money in their, uh, in their economies and they also run uh, bigger deficits, stimulated both monetary and fiscal policy to get the economy going. The question is in South Africa, can we do much more? And so uh, you've got to ask the question there. Well, can we do much more? We've got an NPC rate decision at the end of August. We had CPI coming in uh, at a better level than expected, 6.9%. Uh, of course, the PMI numbers in South Africa disappointing. We mm. had a trade surplus. Does this all strengthen the case for an interest rate cut? Well, it probably raises the odds of an interest rate cut at some point in the future. Although my personal view is still that the, fun the situation has not fundamentally changed since the, uh, the last MPC. And therefore, I don't see really, at least not in August, why, why the Reserve Bank would all of a sudden say, oh, we made a mistake by not cutting in, 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 in June. Um, well, the economy was already quite weak. There's a bit of a disappointment of, of a cyclical upturn not materializing. But as far as inflation is concerned, you know, yes, we had a good number. We've got to remember the previous five mm -hmm. months were disappointing numbers. If you look at the split of inflation, a lot of uh, the CPI components are still above 10%. This is not a great inflation number at the time when many countries have zero to slightly negative CPI readings. When do you see us hitting that target bank of 3 to 6 percent? And also tied in with that, what impact is the ESCOM tariff hike going to have on inflation going forward and also the wage negotiations? Well, the, um, the ESCOM tariff hikes obviously is a, continues to be a contributor to inflation just like it was last year. Uh, so we're not getting a, a new acceleration because of it, but we're not getting the favorable base effect, which we would have had had the last year's uh, tariff hike dropped out of the comparison. Uh, we've got to wait again another year and hope that next year the tariff hikes are, are less pronounced. Uh, equally, the uh, impact of the wage settlements means that uh, you are getting some, some uh, delay in disinflation. Wages probably will eventually slow, but it will have to, ha have to wait until next year. They will adapt to lower inflation if inflation does fall, but they will not lead lower inflation. So we've got to rely on uh, the weakness of the economy, the strength of the currency, and commodity prices. And the latter two, we know they can be volatile. So under an assumption that is reasonably positive of relative run stability over the next mm -hmm. 12 months, I would say, yes, we can hit the target probably around the middle of 2010. But... Uh, if that doesn't materialize, uh, that we are at risk because the margin of maneuver is quite small. Even if we hit the target, we're going to be towards the upper end of the target. Uh, in terms of the RAND, how, how much longer do you think it's going to remain at these levels? And do you think that it's actually been overbought? Well, um, I'd say at the moment, uh, the RAND is benefiting from uh, renewed risk appetite uh, around the world for uh, risky assets, commodity, commodity currencies. So the RAND benefits from being a commodity currency. Uh, there has been a strong inflow in uh, South African equities, which has supported the RAND, which has made the financing of the current account easier in the past few months. And finally, we've had the better trade balance data, which suggests that our current account was much lower in the second quarter than in the first quarter. The question is, um, 
At present, the, 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 the better current account figure is a reflection of weak imports rather than strong exports. So unless our exports do recover, once imports do kick up with the, with, with the end of destocking and the recovery in demand, we're probably going to see widening of the, of the trade and current account deficits again and uh, perhaps more difficulties in financing it. So unless we can generate a serious pickup in exports, we can improve our export performance compared to the past few years, sooner or later the problem of the current account deficit and its financing resurfaces. So I do think, yes, at some point the run weakens again. Now, is it a matter, will it happen in 6 to 12 months, 12 months or uh, 18 to 24 months? I could easily see a situation where growth recovering to next year, the World Cup, provide a little bit of a cushion. but. Eventually, we're, we're delaying an adjustment which I think is necessary in the future. Numero International pegged the rand at 10.25 by the end of the year. Do you think that's uh, overly bearish considering we're currently now at about 7.75 mm. to the dollar? No, it, 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 it is bearish. You need to have uh, probably some, uh, some problem in the markets, some, uh, some reason for investors to uh, uh, stop buying or sell South African equities or some reversal of commodity price increase. If we have a double dip in the global economy and, and, and the market rally of the past few months reverses, yes, that can happen. Otherwise, under, under current global market conditions uh, prevailing and unless really South Africa has a very bad news, which I wouldn't expect, we're unlikely to be that low. Jean-François, just very quickly, you said if we have a double dip in the global economy, do you foresee that happening? Because we're just seeing a lot of risk appetite coming to the fore. The dollar is uh, relatively weak against all uh, major currencies, and this really prompting a lot of optimism that we are, in fact, on a stable path to recovery. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we have, uh, we have a double dip. And actually, at City, we do not foresee a double dip. We actually do feel that as they improve, financial conditions feed through better business sentiment and uh, better actual figures and that uh, we are probably on the path to, to self-sustained recovery. But uh, let's not kid ourselves. And some of the, some of the structural issues which cause the, the, the downturn in the first place are not fully resolved. And if financial markets think that this is a recovery and uh, everything's going to be hunky-dory as if nothing had happened before, then we have the risk of... Uh, asset prices going ahead of fundamentals and then even if fundamentals are okay maybe at some point asset prices run the risk of correcting so uh, volatility is not over i don't think so